have friends around here. Yes. All right, y'all. So first off, welcome to the community. We want thank to thank you, you for being our beer sponsor tonight. And we want to hear a little bit more about Fresh Wata. Yes, Fresh Wata. Wata is an event design and production firm and we're national we do events around the country and love to have fun um fresh water is event planning and design and we build brand experiences by like installing and in nice events nice well and you got a couple of events coming up right so you know it, the community can get involved i guess by being part of your fall social yeah with face up las vegas face up las Tell us vegas a little bit about that and the date networking events it's friday september 27th and it's at our showroom so we're inviting everybody it's in conjunction with a blood drive to check out our showroom and meet also locals and networkers in Las Vegas. Okay, so everybody with extra blood, <laughs> make sure to check out <laughs> make sure to check out freshwata.com. That's W A T A. And uh, you got it you did good though. You got the Twitter handle at Freshwater yeah. and you got the Facebook at Freshwater. So we're relaunching our website, so in a couple of days check back with us and you'll see more about what Freshwater is about. Good. Well thank you so much yeah. for paying for the beer and thank we really you. appreciate you thank coming you out for and inviting me. Appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah, thank you. Frank brought in the wild crew. <laughs> so for our news roundtable this week, we're going to be talking about some really cool stuff coming up. Now, the first thing I hear about is next Thursday, apparently there's going to be an after party starting every Thursday after the podcast. Right. Does an after party sound pretty cool to you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Not right, enough times. Yeah, yeah Vegas. Where, where, where can you party in Vegas? <laughs> so right. the after party is going to be happening at the downtown cocktail room in the back room, and that's going to be every Thursday night. So don't worry if you miss next week, the inaugural one, because you can come every single time. Now, we usually finish filming this podcast at 10, so that's when the party's going to start, and it's going to go all the way through till midnight. So definitely get down there. We want all guests, community members, like VIPs. You're all VIPs since you are in the audience. We want all of you guys to come. And again, that's going to start next week. And uh, just go down there. You don't need an invite. You don't need to RSVP. Just get down there straight after the podcast at 10. Right. So for your Thursday night, you go to the Jelly from 7 to 9. Then you register RSVP on Ticket K. Come up here. Watch the podcast. And then we'll shuffle you over to the DCR. And mm -hmm. then you can end your night or morning there. Thursdays are fantastic. Gar Friends. Guaranteed hangover on Friday night. Yes. <laughs> She's ready for the weekend. Cool. So the next piece of news, I'm very interested to talk to girls in tech. We have Christina here. And I have a Fitbit. And I use a for my fitness, and I hear there's going to be a fitness panel coming up for girls in tech. So, have, tell me about what that's going to entail exactly. Sure. So, we have a check into fitness discussion panel. We've got a panel of experts that are going to talk about informative things for health and fitness, and how you use technology to stay motivated and focused on your goals. That sounds awesome. So, things like checking in to the gym and stuff like that, right? That's right. Yeah. So, after the panel, we've got a series of challenges that we're going to do for eight weeks, mm -hmm. and we're giving away almost a thousand dollars in prizes. We've got a twenty-one day fitness package from the Fit Labs. We've got a free tickets to the Vegas Gone Yoga Festival. Rachel's Ooh. Kitchen gave us some certificates, so it'll be fun. What kind of challenges fantastic. you have? Yeah. So for example, uh, one of the challenges is going to be for one week, uh, change out your favorite beverage with something that's a healthier alternative. Uh, that kind of thing, or uh, yeah, right, like your PBR. Like, you want to drink a carrot or something? <laughs> hey, carrot juice is lovely, and you can get that from Rachel's Take kitchen. Oh, that's, right. Well can. that's right. <laughs> well, awesome. I like that the baby steps to getting towards being better at fitness, and the technology kind of almost creates a novel too to keep you yourself going, right? Yeah, that's right. And you know, a lot of people use social media and use different gadgets to stay motivated. And with the, the way that technology is developing right now, it can be really helpful to be healthy, whatever level your fitness is. Yeah, right now I'm competing with my mom on Fitbit and she's kicking my butt. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> I gotta resolve this. <laughs> so um, you, you have everything from doctors to chiropractors on the panel, which is really cool, but where is the, the panel gonna be held? We're having it at Cobiz Coworking down on South Tanea. Mm -hmm. Kat has donated the space very graciously. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And the date? Date's Thursday the 19th and it's gonna be, the doors will open at 6.30, it's gonna be from seven to eight. 
Excellent. And do people have to register or buy tickets? Or? No, you can just show up. We've got enough space for everybody. Oh, so that's awesome. come on down. Everyone nice. loves a free event. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you, Christina. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank and you. that's our news round table for this week. Come back yeah, anytime. We're ready you to want. go to some events, yeah. <laughs> so this week, um, Tech Cocktail, it's Tech Week. So we're going to be focusing on tech events, um, which is really cool because we have kind of sidetracked a few times over the last few weeks. So we're back to tech this time. The first event I'm going to talk about is the T Band Luncheon, and mm. that features Rob Meadows. He's going to be doing a talk. Now, for those who have been watching the podcast keenly since episode 20 or beforehand, he actually was an interview guest on episode 20. So if you did miss that, it was a really good um, interview. Then get down to the T Band Luncheon. He's going to be talking about 48 hours in Vegas and why software will never be the same, which is very cool. And uh, if that hasn't whet your appetite enough for the event, it's going to be held at Fogo de Chao which is the meat. Brazilian okay. steakhouse. I have been there with friends and it was amazing. <laughs> so it's a lot of meat. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of meat. And yeah. uh, you also get stimulating discussion at the same time. So in between mouthfuls of, of meat, which is gonna be awesome. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I don't either. So that's I gonna be either. on September the 18th. It's a Wednesday and it's gonna be starting. Settle down guys. <laughs> and um, definitely get down for that lunch. Next event we have coming up is Forward.us Las Vegas Happy Hour. Now, Forward.us focuses on the, the immigration reform, and I've jumped through a lot of hoops to get into this country, so immigration reform is very near and dear to my heart. Um, so this is a really good um, organization that helps to try and fix the current immigration system in America in order to create you know, a more competitiveness with other nations' economies um, you know, through letting people in that are really awesome and can really add to the economy, including myself. Yeah, welcome to the States. <laughs> Good so on September the 24th, they're going to be having a happy hour from 6.30 till 8.30 p.m. It's going to be at Work in Progress on 6th Street, so most of you are familiar with that venue. Really, really cool. And they're just going to be trying to find people that want to support and want to help out with this. And I think everyone knows someone who's foreign or, is, or has like a story about having to immigrate to, to the U.S. So um, I'm pretty sure that we'll get a really good following for that. Yeah. So it's September 24th. A lot of good tech talent. Mm -hmm. The next event is High Tech Vegas is coming around again. And that's always, always a really cool mixer. This time it's going to be held at the Foundation Room in Mandalay Bay, which I hear is Ooh. a really cool venue. Uh, tickets are $10, which you can buy on Ticket Cake. And essentially, if you don't know what High Tech Vegas is, it's a meeting of 120 high tech professionals and tech companies in Vegas, uh, just in one event. So you can actually meet and network and get to know the community and also get inspired by everybody else and what they're doing. So make sure you get down to that on September 26th. And our last event, as we mentioned, it's Tech Cocktail Tech Week. So we have Frank from Tech Cocktail yeah. here to tell us about nice. Tech Cocktail that's Celebrate. Oh, yeah. So what is the Tech Cocktail Celebrate yeah. event? Yeah, so that's a little different. So this week is Tech Cocktail Week. We've got people from out of town in to give you know talks and hang out. And we just had our showcase across the street. But um, Celebrate's a little different. So in October, we're not actually doing Tech Cocktail Week. We're going to take all that positive energy and direct it towards the end of the month, uh, which October 23rd through 25th, it's, um, it's basically a conference and our startup showcase, which we've been doing around the country, we're bringing all those startups that have won their, their city together for a national oh, competition. Wow. So there'll be companies from all over the place. Um, they're going to pitch on stage. There'll be judges that then, you know, obviously pick them apart and give them feedback. You know, and help them. And help yes. them. And then also, <laughs> but also then, the, you know, there's, and then there'll be a finals round and then we'll crown, the, you know, the, the, the champ of the entire, you know, country. Uh, there'll also be talks in between. So we've got uh, folks like Tony Shea and um, Matt Mullenweg from WordPress and, oh, yeah. um, Let's see, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, <laughs> Regina Dugan, who's from Motorola, uh, some, the founder of Ning, which is now she's got another company. Oh. Um, so there's a bunch of other co folks that are going to be giving uh, kind of knowledge about uh, how to tech, how to be, create a tech startup. And then there's also going to be a hackathon happening at the exact same time. So people are going to be hacking upstairs, and one of those companies will actually get a chance to, or one of the, the actual products that comes out will actually get a chance to be on stage as well. So oh, really a lot cool. of activity. It'll be over at Meet uh, LV, which I don't know if I'm supposed to say that yet, but we, we <laughs> haven't announced yet. There's, there's no yet. Yeah, we, we don't tell anyone. Yeah. We'll bleep it. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the exclusive. Yeah. We're gonna get several yeah. hundred. 
Yeah, yeah, Visa, right, right. You know, it's totally out of the box. It's probably on CNN already. Um, <laughs> that's why you get, <laughs> so, why you get those 7,000 emails every day. Yeah, that's why it happens. <laughs> so, so basically the idea is celebrating what's happening around the country, bringing it all together downtown, and then it, it kind of goes into Life is Beautiful. So we partnered with Life is Beautiful. Oh, and so you can actually get a ticket for Celebrate and Life is Beautiful together mm. for one hundred. One, yeah. <laughs> One ninety nine for both. Oh, that's super cheap because yeah. normally it's ninety nine for the for the conference, right? For so. the conference, yeah. And then life is beautiful. I think they put their prices up mm -hmm. a little bit so that you can still get that that kind of rate. And we're hoping to draw people from that's all excellent. Places. So they what can do. You, oh, oh, oh. What oh, you, yeah, no, what are you doing with those t-shirts? Oh, t-shirts. Because if you yeah. give me one, I'll wear it for the next you ten got years. This? <laughs> okay, yeah, I agree. yeah. Okay, so straight. What size do you see me in Oh, you see, you see me in ten years, I'll be wearing it. What size t-shirt? Here's here's a medium for you. Do you want a medium? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, what size? Ten years, I might need a bigger one though. And then I've got one more. Yeah, we for an extra large away. person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, don't I make it raise their hand. Oh, there it is. Dylan Dylan. Dylan. Oh. He's the first person I saw. So. He's the chief audience there you participant go. as well. So anyway, well that's, that's what's going on. We'll we hope to get here. everyone from the community involved. We're bringing people from outside as well, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. So how can people find out more about oh, this? Yeah. Dylan has the shirt awesome. on. Awesome. He's already got the shirt on. Oh, it's actually the backwards, shirt Dylan. but I like it that way on him. It's backwards, but I like it on, that, on, on him that way. Um, so yeah, it's actually celebrate.tech.co. So go there and you can find everything nice about it. Um, yeah, it's really easy. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, Thank thanks you. so much. Appreciate okay. it. And that's the news for this week. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. They hear what your name is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so most of you might recognize our next guest by her nickname, the Hardware Sorceress. She formerly led various aspects of the product lifecycle at a rapidly growing Sequoia-funded Series A robotics company, and Remotive. actually, Remotive. 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 But she loves the Remotive. messy early stuff. So she likes pre-production research, design, RFQ manufacturing, sourcing manufacturers, production, research. Just one sec. <laughs> New marketing development, business class planning, discovering MPVs, pricing, distribution strategy, crowd funding, post launch analysis, and general expansion. So, after a brief hiatus that she took to pursue, pursue her passion in naming things after weather related phenomenons, she is back with Nimbus. Yes. And she's here to talk about that project, which is a downtown project back seed stage investment arm of the Vegas Tech Fund. Well, she'll be looking for new companies and early seed companies that are dealing with hardware. So please put your hands together for the hardware sorceress, AKA Jen McCabe. All right. All right. Thank we'll you very much. Get this started. So what do you need? A big Ivy League background, 10 years working in China? No, you have to be stupid. Oh. Uh, when, when, you, when you get sent on a plane to China and anyone tells you you're going to be there for 10 days, run screaming. <laughs> That's not what happens. You live there for seven months. Um, no, you, you need to be obsessed with the product. So okay. if you're going to work in production and operations, uh, every aspect of it has to matter. You worry about the color. You worry about the quality. You worry about what it feels like when you put it in someone's hands. That's what she said. Um, so <laughs> never gets old. Just yeah, never right, gets it old. doesn't. Um, it's younger and younger yeah. every time. <laughs> so no, it's, it, was, it was a fascinating time. And actually, we didn't start production in China for Remotive. We started right here in the Ogden in 1714, right. um, building robots with parts that we laid out on cookie sheets and some coffee table that we stole from Tony. So yeah, illustrious beginnings. Yeah, we were, when me and uh, Joe and Jackie first moved here, we had one of the original versions yeah. that yeah. clear plastic you wanted the bottom that, that you fixed when it broke. Did it, did it yeah. work? No, it worked. It worked. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, it stayed. It didn't know about the edge of tables, was, but it got smart over time. So but let's talk about Nimbus. So people who are looking for, um, like, they have hardware ideas, mm -hmm. and they can actually like come to you, I guess, yeah. and pitch your idea, or how yeah. you yeah. just open emails? Yeah, actually, um, open to emails, and actually two members of the Nimbus team, Ali and Shilpi, are in the back, so you can email them. <laughs> Thanks, Ooh. ladies. Um, but no, we're actually looking for strong early stage teams that are fascinated with things like how do we connect different different devices in the home? Or how do we put a robot in every kid's hands? Uh, how do we make these kinds of new hardware um, technologies affordable? 
and really, really friendly. And my kind of investment criteria is if my mom would use it and my sister would use it and my five-year-old niece would use it, I'm sold. If it takes a, a huge you know, technical background or illustrious education to use, uh, not interested. Except gotcha. Maker Shaker. Maker Shaker. Maybe you made that exception. A bartending robot. I mean, really, <laughs> of course we had to have that. Okay, so well, so I want to get people's mind strings. We have a big entrepreneurial mm -hmm. audience. So these are some of the things that you mentioned that you were kind of looking for. It was robotics, uh, Internet of Things. I'm yes. guessing you're talking about like light switches and doorknobs or yeah, what are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connected kind of, like, home. Like making things smarter that were stupid yep. before. Yep. So <laughs> like okay. your thermostat. Yeah. Right, nest. get the nest in there. Anyone? Yeah. Nest, yeah. And they talk about so. connected devices. Where would be some examples of that? Yeah, so connected devices, actually, we looked at something really interesting today called Karma. Uh, it's a little device that um, we actually, we call contagious cloud device. You plug it in, it's like a router, but you get more data access the more you share access to your Karma. So oh, it's like a, it's a shared oh. access point in addition to being Wi-Fi. They oh, call that's it, pretty cool. It's awesome. They call yeah. it worldwide Wi-Fi, and that's fantastic, so... Okay, drones, weaponized, non-weaponized? No comment. No comment. Okay, hardware as a service. Hardware as a service. So that's something like uh, robots like iRoomba, um, where uh, you can use a robot to clean your house instead of you know, manual labor, your kids, your spouse. Right. That sort of thing. Much manual labor. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about uh, what, what does this current state look like? So I think a lot of people, they think about, like, I want to you know, be an entrepreneur, I want to be a tech yeah. startup, but they think software. But yeah. um, prices are dropping, like 3D printers yes. are more accessible. Like, what is the landscape like if people have some kind of hardware idea right now? Like, what's available to them? Yeah, it's actually really interesting. With the rise of things like um, Adafruit and Alibaba, although please don't ever order your components from Alibaba. Um, come to us, we will help you. Uh, there's actually a Vegas company called Order With Me that will do sourcing in China for you if you have a hardware idea. There are some cool guys in the back, Kevin, um, who are working on prototyping of oh, all yeah. kinds of awesome stuff. Um, and so with 3D printing, you can now prototype very rapidly. And with the rise of pre-order sites like Indiegogo and Kickstarter, you can put your prototype up to test whether or not people will buy it. And we actually think that's a great early kind of market indicator. Yeah. Um, but the hardware market is going quickly beyond that. Uh, it's now easy to like throw something up on Kickstarter, try to fulfill it for six months, although we can talk about how hard that is later. And then your next order might be to Urban Outfitters or Brookstone or the right. Apple Store. Um, and so you have these tiny teams jump, yeah. of three to five people who now can put hardware in everyone's hands, and that's awesome. Gotcha. Just the right time to get seed stage funding. Okay, so 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 walk me through the process. Say say yeah. say Kevin comes to you and he's like, you know, we need an extra battery pack for Google Glass <laughs> or just something wild that's impossible just to build, that happens, right? You know. Like what would you when you're trying to assess it for whether yeah. you do think it's something that should be funded? What's yeah. what's walk me through the internal dialogue and the criteria that's going through your head? Oh, all the voices. Um, no. So what happens with hardware <laughs> is you actually you want to look for a strong hardware component, but you definitely look want to look for design chops and software experience. So um, a lot of hardware will become commoditized over the next next three to five years, lots of people will build drones, they'll build robots, uh, they'll build speakers. Um, and so we want a strong kind of software team that's really thinking through the user experience. That early stage team usually looks like a CEO who's charismatic and sales oriented, uh, a mechanical engineer or industrial engineer, um, and then usually a software engineer. And then beyond that, really, really great teams are usually rounded out by a super strong marketer and a super strong salesperson. So that's what we look for. Okay. And then when it, when it comes to team unity, I mean, are you still mm -hmm. putting people above skills or is somebody who's oh, coming yeah. from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. BFA fellows. I'm insulted for them. BFA no, fellows? So, so actually, this, these guys are great. So um, Shilpi is uh, from Duke. Did I get that right this time? Not Cornell. Okay. Shilpi's from Duke. And Shilpi is doing strategic <laughs> development for Nimbus. So she's working with mentor companies like Mattel and yeah. iRobot, who are helping our, our uh, portfolio companies. Um, and then Ali is working on a top secret Nimbus project. Do you have a favorite? No. Nope. You, you put them both through psychological tests. I, I do tests, not. I, I do not have a favorite child um, yet at this point. Okay. Well, one of them told me you put them through a similar psychological <laughs> test to this one that I took today. I did. So I put, I put you both through that, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, this is called the Disc Index. I took about a half hour to. Uh, take it on Tony Robbins' website. So, it's a big fan. So, I was wondering if you could check this out for a second and tell me if you think I could fit this. Well, I wouldn't hire partners. you as a machinist. So really? Me, I have no say. machinist skills? No, you have what no you machinist for? skills. Um, well, your beer can is turned wrong, and that's, you, you have to be OCD. It's an attention to, to be detail, a machinist. Right? You have to be, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's a, a low attention to detail. Whoa, this is it. interesting. You're, an, you're a high interactive person. Who knew from the podcast? Who would have known? <laughs> Shocker, right? Oh, <laughs> you're a, you're a, <laughs> Comes with our name. You're a high eye. Get them oh, wait, wait, to, uh, uh, 
you can at times be too impulsive in making decisions. Can I have $50? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Jeez, um, yeah. Let me see what else. You tend to all be right, a- All right, enough of yeah, this. Yeah. So we don't need to go through it. <laughs> okay, I was trying to embarrass them, not me. Gosh. All right, Lenny's, I gotta, I gotta find out what robots of the future are gonna look like. So I was wondering if we could bring my time machine up, Pavel or Jackie, anybody at my time machine? I thought, yeah, I was thinking what we could do is we could jump 10 years into the future and then we could assess what the scene looks like as far as robotics. So we didn't take all these wild guesses that everybody's doing in, in today's time. <laughs> like okay. you do. When yeah, you're thank thinking you. of the future. <laughs> all right, guys, and everyone in the audience, this, this might hurt just a little bit, but it's well worth it. And uh, in three, two, one, I will see you guys in the next 10 years. <laughs> That was crazy, wasn't that it? That was crazy. I mean, that... <laughs> that was... That I knew it hurt, but I didn't think it took Crazy that's is always, not the word for it. No, that's Something really not. more. All so right, much well, more. All right, so here we are 10 years later. And when, you know, I got to tell you the truth. At the time, I thought a robot vacuum cleaner and a machine that can bring my iPhone to me with wheels, yeah. like the remote thing, like I figured that was the end of it. But these robots really did take over these last 10 years. All right, so this is a standard protocol animal robot. Um, <laughs> So tell yeah. me about like yeah, tell me about all its features and exactly what did happen over these past ten years. I have there are not words. Uh, well, it looks like so, bipedal, huh? So they do walk. That's true. Yeah, robots can now walk. They move with things including tank drive. Uh, they roll. They also apparently sometimes smoke or not, and uh, they talk to each other, right? Hello, my friend. <laughs> so tell me about their artificial intelligence. I mean, they seem friendly. Is so, it going to kill me or anything? Uh, or? Well, we hope not. There are some bugs in mm. the programming, but we're working on cloud robotics, and, and we think that the robots are friendly, right? Yeah, it's a rough right. World War right. Four, but we got through it. Yes, I like you. Do you <laughs> like me? Yes, <laughs> I do. All right. <laughs> Test the, the robot's intellect. They're actually getting smarter over time. Oh, yeah, for sure. What can they do? Uh, what's the robot? What what is the what is the square square root of eighty one? Almost nine. Well done. Well, well, well done. Well, this is living in the future. We'll, right? we'll have to take this one in for maintenance. Hydraulics or what's making these guys move? Uh, actually, we're they're now um, integrated with human biomechanics and designed biomorphically. <laughs> 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 We spend a lot of time training with uh, now classic cat videos on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, so that they adopt feline behavioral <laughs> patterns. Can you bathe yourself, robot? Yeah. Oh, it's so realistic. It's just incredible. It is. It is. It is. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Okay, so tell me, tell me a little bit about programming these. Now anyone, anyone can actually program. You wear a Google Glass-like device that was invented here in Las Vegas, and you put it on, and you sync your mind with your mm. robot's memory banks. Gotcha. That was and one so of your original investments, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, that company, that really panned out for Cerebrobot, you. Right. made me millions of dollars, and I'm a very happy woman I today. remember when they bought Google. That was a big move. <laughs> that was. Really good. Made me made me very happy. Yeah. Very happy. So is it easy to program these things or do they just It is, yeah. It's okay. just it's just a thought away. What am I thinking right now, Robot? Oh, they can read your mind. They can read my mind. I like turtles. <laughs> what kind of battery? What about electricity? Have we saw this battery problem all taken care of now? Battery problems are mostly solved. Uh, solar? We, we actually yeah, mostly solar, but we Low power are... shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, solar. Can we solve some of these? <laughs> Excuse me, if we could focus here, that'd be most beneficial for the audience. Robots are very serious business. <clears throat> yes. But they don't have any feelings, right? Or did that come? Well, actually, uh, this particular model has a little bit of its programmer's DNA. Can you go to jail if you... We're, well, let's not talk about that. We're, it's in the experimental phases. The new, the new robot version of the FDA, the RDA, is currently looking mm. into human robot cloning. Gotcha. But nothing's been decided. Just well, add now, that, now that we just have add the ten. Now that we have flying cars <laughs> and space balloons. Oh um, yeah. The, the we're on Mars. We're, we are not on Mars. Mars oh, didn't have any balloons. water. We're still looking. Um, the Knew scientists it. were wrong. Yeah. Um, thank you, NASA, for all that wasted effort. Can we get some more space shuttles? Um, 
So no, no, the future looks very, very bright. Where yeah. robots are teaching us more about ourselves every day, and we're learning to be generous with other kinds of creatures. Forever. Is that quantum mechanics thing all figured out? No, no one's got that one either. That's oh, still man. open. We'll make an investment there if anyone's working in quantum mechanics. What's your new fund Cold that you're fusion? running now? Cold Fusion, yeah. also not solved. Yeah. Looking for new quantum mechanic companies? That's exactly okay. right. All right, well, thank you for coming to the future with us and coming out to check out the Downtown Podcast, episode 5000. We're going to take the show out by going to Susan. If you so I'm here with the audience, and we're still in the future, and the future's pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in the future, we had World War V, sadly, and uh, we fought and we won, and we won because of Pavel. <laughs> so, Pavel, how did you single handedly win World War V for us? World War V was a bad scene, I'll be honest. Um, but thanks to, I, I just showed everybody the, the magical internet power of cats and Will Wheaton and don't be a dick. And it just, that was it. That's all you needed, cats and Will Wheaton. Powerful message of the, of the internet and cats. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for saving the world. Pavel. Not a problem, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, we'll see you next week. Hey.